chemists, welcome to TP's Chemistry Cuts. In this video, we look at two factors that affect the pH of an acidic or basic solution. We start with dilution and then move on to look at acid and base strength. Okay, how can pH change? Well, the first thing is, let's put this over here. The sound is that pH depends upon the concentration of H3O+. Anything that causes H3O+, concentration to change, will cause the pH to change. And one way of changing H3O plus concentration is just to keep adding water in to something. So say you start with an acid, okay, an acid uh, that has a pH of 1. If you dilute it tenfold, okay, the concentration goes down. So we say we start with 1 mole per litre and we take 1 mil of that and add another 9 and that takes it to 10 mils, then we've actually diluted that by a 10, by a factor of 10. So it's now 1 times 10 to the minus 1, which will tell you the pH is 1. Okay, that's a very quick bit of maths, but when you've worked through this a bit, you'll see that that's true. So these numbers are telling you that the concentration of H3O plus, if you change a pH value, it's going tenfold smaller as you go upwards. So if you look at something with a pH of 1 and compare it with something with a pH of 0, it's telling you that the HBO concentration is 10 times less. If you go the other way, then it's 10 times more. So if you go from a very acidic solution to a neutral solution, you're changing it by 7 more orders of magnitude. So you're, say, you're diluting it tenfold, then tenfold again, then tenfold again, and so on, 7 times. Yeah? So it's an order of magnitude each time. And by an order of magnitude, I mean by a factor of 10. So going up in the numbers means it's becoming more dilute. So that's one way of changing the pH. Now, it doesn't mean that if you start with an acid at zero and just keep diluting it, you'll end up with a uh, pH of 14. It doesn't work like that, as you'll see. So what we're saying is that because it's a measure, a logarithmic measure of the concentration of H3O plus and the logarithm we're using, the logarithm uh, base factor is 10, by changing from one value to the next, it's changing the concentration by a factor of 10. So going upwards for an acid by one step on the pH scale means that you are decreasing the concentration of H3O plus by a factor of 10. So it's becoming 10 times less concentrated. So a small change on the pH scale is a large change in concentration. It often doesn't look much, but it can be pretty dramatic. If you're looking at bases, it's reverse. Okay, as you'll see, when you're looking at a base, you're looking at very, very tiny concentrations. As you dilute a base, what you're in fact doing is diluting the OH minus concentration, and that causes the H3O plus concentration to go up, which means that the pH scale goes down, which sounds incredibly uh, twisted. So I'll write it down so you can get the general idea. When I say a factor of 10, I mean it's being diluted tenfold. So if you add a 0.1 mole per litre base, that actually has a pH of, I think it's 13. Okay. And if you dilute that by a factor of 10, it'll actually go down to 12. The second factor is the strength 
of the acid or the base. Now we'll stick to acid, but what we say about acids applies equally to bases. Okay. Now, if you were to take a whole series of acids and you make them up at the same concentration, so at this point we're removing, so we did like our fair tests that you do when you're at, uh, uh, in uh, lower years, talk about your fair test, we're making a whole series of acids, different acids, and we're making them up to the same concentration. So we're not changing concentration at all, that's no longer a factor. And so we take citric acid, hydrochloric acid, uh, tartaric acid, uh, ethanoic acid, and we went along and actually measured the pH of all of those acids, they're the same concentration, would you expect them to be the same pH? So if you take hydrochloric acid, would it have the same pH as, say, citric acid if it's got the same concentration? And all of you are shaking your heads because you know intuitively that different acids have different strengths to them. Some are really acidic. Others are not as acidic, whatever that means. Okay? And this relates to acid-base strength. What we're looking at is when an acid is added to water, the acid donates H plus to water. What it's actually doing when it does that is dissociating into ions. Yeah? So you're left behind an anion, for example, with HCl, you're left Cl minus behind, and you're putting H plus on H2O, so you get an H3O plus. So as a result of acting like an acid by donating its proton, you've dissociated it into ions. So if you look at that and say that whenever you add any acid, let's do that as a general approach, an acid, when you add it to water, dissociates into ions. When we talk about the acid-base strength, that's all about how much of the acid dissociates. Okay? Now, some acids, they're quite a small number, but some acids, when you add them to water, they completely dissociate. And by that I mean that every single molecule you put in that water solution will split up into ions. Every single acid molecule will donate its H plus to water. And those are what we call strong acids. And you might be able to tell, you'd be able to tell me a strong acid. Give me an example of a strong acid. Hydrochloric, okay. Any other? Nitric acid is? Sulfuric. And there's one other and that's HBr, and that's it. All of those are what we call strong acids, okay? And what we mean, as I say, is that every single acid molecule, when it's added to water, will dissociate into ions, okay? They completely dissociate. Right, let's put that down. Now, the important thing to notice, the really important thing to notice, is the type of arrow that's used. What that's telling you is there is no reverse reaction. Okay? If there was, you wouldn't get 100% uh, dissociation. Right, let's have a look at strong bases. Now, these are a little bit different. Okay? These tend to be, or are, ionic salts involving OH- or hydroxide. So they're metal hydroxide salts. Okay. What we're talking about is solids, because these are ionic, they're all solids, and they dissolve. When they dissolve, what's happening is that the anions and cations are separating from one another. So the classic example is sodium hydroxide. So that's a solid. You add water, okay, so it's not actually a reaction, but what you're forming is Na plus in solution and OH minus in solution. And remember what we said is that that OH minus being present in solution makes the solution basic, so this is a base. Yeah? So it's valid to call it that, even though it's not actually uh, accepting a proton from anything. 
And if you see any ionic salt that's a hydroxide, okay, any metal hydroxide, then they are strong bases. Do now, it's the weak acids and bases we need to look at. Weak acids This is an organic molecule. You'll deal with this, uh, these types of molecules later on. These are called carboxylic acids. The word gives it away a bit. And if you add those to water, okay, notice I'm putting the AQ in here, and then leave them, what you will find is that compared to an equal concentration of solution of HCl, ethanoic acid will have a pH that's somewhat higher which is telling you that when it reacts with water and acts like an acid, okay, it's telling you that the concentration of H3O plus that's formed is actually lower. So if this is completely dissociating to, to give a certain concentration, and this one at the same concentration of starting reactant gives a lower concentration of product, it's telling you that a significant proportion of reactant is not reacting. In other words, not acting as an acid. So what's actually happening is only a small proportion of these are acting as acids. They're donating their proton to water, so you're getting a lower concentration of H2O+. Still an acid, and it's still an acidic solution, because it's donating a proton, and this is being formed, so that makes the solution acidic. But because the concentration of this is lower, Okay, then the pH is going to be somewhat higher, even though you started with the same concentration of the reactant acid. And what we're saying is that a small proportion of these are actually dissociated into ions. Or what we say is it's only partially dissociated. So let's go back to this. Okay. If we were to start with a one mole per litre of this, then what you would find is that that would completely dissociate and you get one, which we say 0.1 mole per litre, you get 0.1 mole per litre of the product. Okay, because everything dissociates. And that means the pH of that would be about what? It is in fact what, not about, it is exactly what. Okay, if you were to take this, okay, what you'll find is that, in fact, only about 0 0.001, in fact, one in a hundred molecules is actually dissociated. Okay? So this would be about pH 3. It's a little less than that. It's about 2.7, I think. Uh, so, but approximately one in a hundred are actually dissociating. Okay? It's a dynamic process, remember, because you've got this reversible arrow. You've still got these two are reacting together to form these, these two react then to form those. And it's in dynamic equilibrium, so the rate of dissociation is equal exactly by the rate of association of these two, if you like, uh, and so it seems that nothing's happening. But overall, it's uh, the picture is that only one in a hundred of these dissociates. Okay? And so this is why it's called a weak acid. So you've got 0.1 mole per litre that's both been dissolved up, but this one's completely forming 0.1 mole per litre of this. This one, however, is only giving you 0.001 because most of them are not dissociated. And this is where people make the mistake. They'll often, because they're frantically writing an answer out, always use one of these arrows. It is really, really important that if you're dealing with either a weak acid or a weak base, you must, absolutely must, use a reversible arrow. Okay? If you don't, you'll lose them up. And they will ask you a question, probably, that involves you having to write an equation. Okay? It shows, if you don't, that you don't recognise the difference between 
weak and strong acids. Okay. Examples of weak acids. There's a whole series of uh, organic compounds called carboxylic acids that are like this one. This is ethanoic acid, which is in vinegar. You've got methanoic acid, which is uh, stuff that stings from things like uh, ants. You know, the ants that bite, that give you a sting. Uh, if you're from Europe, you'll know about stinging nettles. Again, that's methanoic acid, and so on. Uh, HNO2 is another example of a weak acid. That's nitrous acid. Okay. Uh, what else have we got? HF. Interestingly, you'd think that would be a strong acid, wouldn't you? It's not. It's a weak acid. Uh, and this will get people a little bit worried. If you take NH4+, plus, so something like a salt, of ammonium, so ammonium chloride, that is also a weak acid. Okay. So we'll come back to that later. So those are just some examples. Okay. B is a uh, weak basis. Okay. Now, unlike strong bases, which are all ionic, these are ionic because they're metal salts. Okay. These are molecules or molecular ions. Okay, so for example, the one that we've come across time and again already is ammonia. And again, don't forget the reversible arrow sign. So this is acting as a base because it's accepting a proton from the water. And the solution is basic because OH- is formed in the reaction. Okay. And if you compare, say, a, a 0.1 mol per litre solution of ammonia with that of a 0.1 mol per litre solution of uh, sodium hydroxide, this would have a pH of 13, which means that everything has separated and is in solution. So 0.1 moles of that has actually formed 0.1 mole of that in solution. If you look at this, it's somewhat lower. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's somewhat lower. And so that's telling you that only a small amount of this is actually dissociated. When we're looking at strong and weak acids, sorry, weak acids, for example, this is one of the stronger weak acids. Okay, this is one that dissociates more than other weak acids. Some weak acids dissociate. If you look at ammonium here, okay, that is a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. But it's significant because we can measure it. The pH is not 7. It's actually higher, sorry, lower than 7. So it's an acid. With this one, this is significant. The amounts we're dealing with are tiny, tiny, but they're still significant because we can measure the effect. One of the things that often gets people confused is the distinction between concentration and acid-base strength. Okay? And that's what I want to cover in the final part of this lesson because I think there's probably enough for you to be mulling over here. I'm going to write it all again, because I think it doesn't hurt to keep repeating this, and then generally you sort of get the idea. So strength relates to degree of dissociation. How much of what you're adding into solution is dissociating into ions? Concentration, that's telling you the number of uh, particles, acid or base particles, in a unit volume. So it's something completely different. And that's where we'll finish.